I pay close attention to the, the events, the current events, things that are happening in, in the world today. And, and I'm, I'm an avid reader and, and researcher, so I want to know what's going on, what, what causes these things to happen, what, the, the why and the how. Uh, so that drives me. In the studio, I'm, I'm trying to uh, find those answers. Uh, growing up in America, in, um, in the ghetto, in, in the press, depressed black neighborhoods, um, and then moving to a more unsegregated part of, of the country, unsegregated part of Portland, uh, I get a different view of, of what's, what's really going on, what uh, the inequities and the, the um, the constraints that are put on on African Americans that uh, some people aren't even aware of, because we live in a world of omissions, dismissions, and uh, social annihilation of, of black people. I've been painting for most of my life, but I started off, of course, drawing. I, um, my formative years, I grew up in, in uh, the rural South, um, Jim Crow South. My great-grandmother, who I spent my first 10 years of life with, was born a slave. And, um, so, and I grew up in the Jim Crow era. So it's that connection between slavery, I'm that link, or one of the links between slavery and Jim Crow. Uh, once, once we were freed uh, from slavery, then uh, the, the structure, the white structure, devised ways to keep us nearly as close to slavery as they could. And that, and that effort continues today, I believe. We lived in the, in the rural, there was nothing there. There was no library, there was nothing. There was a store and a gas station. Um, but when we went to town, um, <laughs> my first time, my brother and I, we went, we didn't know, we went into this, this restaurant and sat down and, <laughs> and wanted a Coke. Uh, and, and the lady said, well, we don't serve black people here. But you can sit over there in that counter over there, and we'll serve you. And I didn't, I didn't really understand what she was saying, because even though it's happening all around you, your child, you don't understand that. So uh, that was my first encounter with, with that, that, with that racism directed, directed personally at me, um, and and. Since then, I've seen it structurally. I've seen it, um, you know, it's just rampant. It's all over. It's, 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 it's systemic. And we, we live at it in, uh, day to day. Institutional, um, you name it, it's systemic. And, and I've dealt with that all of my life. So um, I paint about those kinds underneath, you know, those kinds of injustices. You know, you might have a, a red, but there's an overlay, there's an undertone to that red. Is it blue? Is it, you know, what is it? And that's what I'm talking about, is those undertones that you don't really see, but you feel them every single day. Every black man does. And as a black man in America, I certainly feel it. But I have that voice. The studio, the work is my voice. Uh, and that's, and, and these things, when I really stop to think about them, when I'm in the midst of the research, sometimes it's so difficult that I, I can hardly stand it about uh, how African Americans have been treated in, in, in the world and the fact that 
now there's an effort to deny that. Enslaved Africans brought to the Americas the notion of call and response. Uh, and this is a, this is a sub-Saharan tradition all over Africa of um, call and response. And, and this is how they communicate. They, this call and response can be done in, in a number of ways. Often it's done with drums and inviting people to, to civic participation uh, through this call and response. Um, and that's partially what I'm trying to do is, is to open a dialogue through my work I'm making the call, and I'm, and I'm looking for the response of, um, well, why is he painting those, those horrible pictures of, of, of black people? So I want them to be attracted to the overall picture by the color and the composition um, and how I place the, 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 the center of interest. And then when they approach the piece and really study it, they say, oh my God, he's not talking about pretty colors, he's talking about something else. And that's, that's the reaction that I'm, that I'm looking for. And, and then the question is, what is that something else? What are you, what are you trying to say, man? Um, and I, I don't want to tell the whole story. I don't want to say, this is what I'm saying, and this is what you have to believe I'm saying. No, I, I want to leave it open to interpretation. Um, but still understand that there's, there's something dynamic going on that this artist is talking about. So uh, community, to, to me, has been extremely generous, I think, in, in allowing me a platform um, to, to say what some people really don't want to hear. And sometimes I really don't want to say, but it's the world that I live in and I try I try very hard not to censor myself too much. I've done a couple of murals, large murals here in Portland, and that's really one of the connections that I've made with the community, uh, that and I've worked with kids at Donnelly Long, uh, uh, working with kids that, that are, are involved with Measure 11, which was a measure that incarcerated youths um, under under 18 who, who've been accused of really, really serious crimes. Uh, and I worked with those guys for over two years. This was a connection to the community and it was a connection with young African Amer American males that, um, that I could relate to. One of those guys, uh, correctional officers, said that the kids there was this big football game on, and the kids chose to come to my class to work on the barrels. Yeah. That was pretty amazing. 